shout out to Nest Town for that dopey effects that he put on this edit and welcome to a new tutorial guys what's going on youtube it's castle scope and we're back with another one today's video we brought the face cam back baby but what we're gonna be doing today is swapping james harden from james harden and kevin Durant from their old photos to the new updated nets because you guys have heard the news james harden is headed to the nets so let's get into this photoshop jersey swap dual jersey swap and also a head swap let's do it i'm gonna get all the info to you guys that I go through when I make these pieces like this. So make sure you guys slap that like button, share with a friend, and let's get right to it, man. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna need to name this as my main background layer. So you just double click on the thumbnail there and I'm gonna press main background, then I'm gonna press Control J, and this is going to be background. And then I'm going to make one more Control J, and it's going to be mask one it's going to be KD's mask so I might just put KD and then mask 2 will be James Harden and that's how you just want to set up your projects when you're um, about to start something so another thing that you might want to do when you have those all uh, named is just maybe make them different colors but you know that's kind of just going in depth but you just right click on the thumbnail and you can just make it different colors so that's how you color code, just right click and then you can choose literally a color that Photoshop has. But what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna mask out James Harden. So I'm gonna try and use select subject on here, but I don't know how well it's gonna work because this is kind of an old picture, but we can see. So go to select and we're gonna go to subject and let's see what type of mask we get. And we're not getting the mask that I want to have. Uh, definitely not, especially for James Harden. So I'm gonna press control D and I'm just gonna use my pen tool right here. If I if select subject doesn't work, I use the pen tool. So with the pen tool, you're just gonna click around your subject and you can click and also drag to change the angles and the curves, but just click and make sure you just take your time with the pen tool. Once I have the full selection, I'll show you guys where I go from there and uh, how to really just save your selection, stuff like that, but for right now, I'm going to just get my mask all the way around James Harden. When you're doing the hair, kind of go over the hair because when we use, when we get the mask, we can refine the hair after. So don't try to like make a shape out of the hair because it just doesn't look right and it doesn't look clean or it doesn't look good either. Um, this is going to be a head swap, but I'm just saying just for, just for a heads up when you're doing something with the pen tool, you don't need to try to get right on the edge of the hair but everything else you want to be relatively close with but with that being said once i'm done with this mask we'll be right back all right so once you use the pencil and you kind of got your mask there just come around and you see on the last part i just um connect it back to where it was originally so boom there it is go to right click and i'm going to go to make selection i'm going to go feather radius zero anti-alias yeah new selection okay boom um this was on this was on combined when I have my path make sure it's on combined shapes because it was on some track so and you have to press control I so now I'm thinking about doing the same thing with the pen tool for the mask of KD but I think that uh, the select subject is actually not too bad on him so I might try and work off of this so I'm just going to use this actually and I'm gonna use like the lasso tool to get things out um, pretty quickly if you hold down alt while you're using the lasso tool it's the opposite when you have it on um, add shapes it'll be the opposite so hold down alt and you can just subtract from it and then um, for the parts that like missed or that you need to add you can use the pen tool um, or just be super super cautious with the lasso tool but I'd, I'd suggest using the pen tool if you're like new to doing uh, Photoshop or just not super comfortable with the pen tool I'm just really comfortable or not super comfortable with the lasso tool I mean um, but yeah Whatever way that you're gonna get it to make it look neat, and also a quick tip to use is when you're doing mask, if you press Q, you can see uh, a rough uh, outline of what where the mask it really is. So that's a good thing to utilize while you're doing your masking um, in Photoshop. So yeah, I'm gonna finish this up and mask him out, and I'll be back. All right, so same type of thing. When you're here, just go right click. Oops, don't right click. Go to 
the layer mask boom and now I can see that I have both players masked out okay and uh, what I like to do is add a solid layer behind so just go to your semicircle go to solid color boom and I like to add like probably like a darker gray color just so I can just see um, the two masks and I don't have to worry about the background and now we're gonna get ready to um, get into our clearing of the jersey just on the front side um, of the numbers because for the rest I think we can try and go over it at first and then and then uh, try and see where we're at from there instead of trying to do everything at once and clear the whole jersey out so to clear these jerseys out what I usually use is like I'll just go to the polygon lasso tool you could use the pen tool too and um, just get in pretty close with the polygon lasso tool make sure your uh, add shapes is on and just mask out around the numbers you want to stay pretty close to the numbers you don't have to be exactly on them but you don't want to start uh, content aware filling too much of the jersey texture out um, especially on older pictures you want to try and keep it pretty neat um, so that when you do add a new texture on it can just recognize it and that's why we're gonna after I do this I'm going to save it as a displacement map because we're gonna put those Brooklyn Nets jerseys on the classic one so we want to make sure that we have a nice jersey uh, base to work off from so something like that um, also get rid of the finals logo and then the only other thing I'm gonna worry about right now is the OKC Thunder logo right here try and get this off as well okay so this is gonna be for KD so once you have your selection press shift F5 and we're gonna go to constant wear fill you can put color adaptation on um, blending mode is gonna be on 100 and no normal and it's opacity is gonna be on 100 so then press OK and it should do a pretty good job you see right there it's kind of weird so we just use a con uh, clone stamp tool it's s so you're going to hold down alt to select the area that's similar and just slide down like that just like that and then on the edges you can just use the clone stamp tool or if you want you could use the smudge tool as well and the smudge tool kind of blurs things out so see like how they have those hard edges just use the smudge tool and you can kind of just move things out a little bit you don't want to go too crazy but move things around somewhat like that and you can just you can just play off both of them but smudge tools should do a pretty good job and then we're gonna go to the same thing and do the same thing to James Harden so once you have these things masked out, what we're going to do is make displacement maps now. So I'm going to go on the top layer and I'm going to hold down Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Okay, Control, Alt, Shift, E. If you're on the Mac, it's Option, I believe. So I'm going to hold Control, Alt, Shift, E like that. Boom. And what you're going to have to do is just put a channel mixer on the top, clip it. So right click, create a clipping mask. And um, so clip these together. Going to go to monochrome on this. Boom, like that. Just go to monochrome then we can merge these together as well and then you're going to go to filter blur and gaussian blur i usually use a blur of about one when i'm doing displacement maps just like that okay and that should be good for your displacement map so then you're just going to go to file save as save on your computer and save it as just james kd displacement you know whatever you want to name it as but just know that it's your displacement map and this is going to come in handy when we have to use texture for the jersey um, one other thing that I want to show you is um, if you're doing the hair we don't have to do the hair in this case but if you're doing the hair and you want to refine it you would just use the refine edge tool and you would go around the hair and softly um, just refine it like what like it, the tool says and then you press decontaminate colors I don't really use any of these and then press ok right but we don't have to refine the edges here but that's just in case you want to if you're doing a different type of jersey swap and you came to see that 
Now, the next thing I'm going to do is try and actually get these jerseys looking to where we want them to be. So, what I'm going to do first is just take a sample, or not a sample, but I'm going to take a sample of this color. And what I'm noticing from these Nets jerseys is that it actually might be kind of difficult to try and just uh, put the texture on because of all the text there. So, I'm going to show you guys what you can do um, in case that does run into, you run into a problem with that because... Um, yeah, we're gonna work through it. So you see right here, we have the Nets jersey, and this would fit pretty well on Kevin Durant. But the only problem that we have right now is that he has he. There's just a lot of different colors on this jersey. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually paint the colors on that I think are gonna be there and that will look good. So what I'm gonna do on this mask of Kevin Durant right here is um, first things first. I'm going to I'm going to make duplicates of the James Harden mask and the Kevin Durant mask and I'm going to put them in their own little group. So I'm going to just name this um, duplicate mask and this is just in case. So if I mess something up, then I don't have to really worry about it. So what you're going to do on the Kevin Durant mask is you're just going to add a channel mixer again like we did before. So go boom channel mixer, clip it to put it on monochrome. And when you're when you put this on monochrome, you're going to uh, put the you're going to only mask out the jersey part. So you're going to invert the mask control I and then we're just going to brush in on the on the mask or you can use a selection tool. But on the mask of the jersey, make sure you just brush in the channel mixer to where it should be. And this will only be on the jersey. So just take your time and brush this in. Okay, so I moved a little bit ahead because this was really confusing, honestly. So I had to figure things out. But when you have like everything out, you're just gonna use a channel mixer layer, okay? And then we're gonna go to monochrome. Then you, like I said, you paint to only the mask of your jersey. So whatever selection tool you wanna use, paint to whatever is your jersey, okay? But in this case, I had to use a little bit of monochrome channel mixer so you guys see it right there. But I only painted in some areas because I used a gradient map on top and this gradient map goes from from black to white but in the middle I picked colors uh, that were similar to this jersey right here so I used my eyedropper tool to pick similar colors from this jersey and then adjusted from there so see if you pick a color there and then you have to adjust it just to get it to this color in there and then pick one shade that's a little bit darker from here too and uh, yeah you'll be all set just when you're when you're using your gradient map, um, make sure that make sure that you have your eye your mouse clicked on this thumbnail right here, the actual square thumbnail, not your layer mask, because then you won't be able to use your eyedropper. So then I, I put these um, little little bluish um, whitish things on top from the monochrome, and then I also added one levels adjustment just to try and balance this out with color and things like that to get it to look almost exactly like this because um, if I tried to just paste this jersey on it wouldn't be in good texture so this gives me a better opportunity to create this so I just use your soft brush when you're brushing on those those whites that are from the channel mixer and then um, now what I'm gonna do is just use actually some of these elements from a Nets jersey and paste them onto Kevin Durant's jersey. And then we're gonna do the same thing for James Harden, but let, first let's do it with Kevin Durant so that you guys see the full process. Then I'll probably go over it faster with James Harden. So let's do it. So I'm gonna use this image of Bruce Brown, and right now what I'm just gonna do is mask out his collar right here. And then I'm gonna put it onto Kevin Durant. So use your pen tool or your lasso tool or you know whatever selection tool you want to use but just make sure it's clean make sure it's neat don't rush anything when you're doing jersey swaps because then you'll just run into a bunch of problems and a lot of jersey swapping is just thinking critically like what's the best what's the best way i can get this looking the way it should or what's the best method that i should use as always it's going to change um not every picture is the same just keep that in mind when you're doing this type of stuff and you'll be fine just practice a lot you'll be fine so I'm right clicking making my selection 
mask it. Now I'm gonna duplicate this layer because I might use more elements and I'm gonna delete this layer. I'm gonna call this collar boom control C and I'm gonna paste it onto here control V. So now I have my first collar, right? And I'm just gonna make it uh, I'm gonna make it into a smart object and flip it horizontally, right? And we're just gonna try and start lining it up. So once you start getting it all lined up like this then you're gonna go right click distort because you need it to be in perspective so distort it like this and the collar actually rides up pretty high so something like that just like that right there okay now this mask KD I'm gonna actually apply a layer mask and you guys will see why in a second so once I have this I'm like all right that looks pretty good what I'm gonna do with this collar is gonna go to filter and I'm gonna go to liquify all right so now once you're in filter liquify um, you're gonna you're gonna make sure that your forward warp tool is on and show your backdrop to make sure this is on as well and I'm gonna go to my mask one of Kevin Durant all right so now I have my mask one of KD oh, is that it yeah I think it is all right so I have my mask on a KD and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just warp it to his body actually so we're gonna forward warp it just like it says warping it to his body and keep in mind that you just want it to kind of line up everything with where the where the collar is from before and if you just keep an eye on that it'll be fine you can zoom in um, really get in depth and really get everything just super clean before you go forward and make sure like the width stays the same um, consistent length because it does change a lot when you start doing this so just make sure that the width stays like relatively the same all right and then once you're done we're just gonna hit preview and that's before and after then we'll press ok and now we have his collar on there so we're just gonna add a layer mask and um, use your black black brush and I'm just gonna paint this out that's like going over his neck right just like that and then on the jersey of him we just have to move this stuff out so I'm gonna use my content aware fill and mask out the collar that was underneath before be careful with this try not to have repeating uh, wrinkles in the jersey or anything like that it's gonna take away from how clean the jersey is and um, if you need to go back into liquify like see right here I kind of think I need to go back and move this down a little bit you can do that that's why you make things a smart object so that you can go back and change them if need be so there we go masking out and it looks looks really good and really clean how it wraps around his um, how it wraps around him so now once you do that, we're going to do the same thing for the, the sleeves. So I don't want to repeat the whole process, but you guys know what to do now. So we're just going to mask it out, put it on there roughly. Then we're going to size it, distort it. If you need to warp tool it, you can use that and then go into liquify and make sure everything is on there nice. Now here's the area, the only area where you might use a displacement map with this because uh, of the way it kind of wraps around, you might want to use one. But if you do want to use a displacement map, all you got to do is go to filter, distort, and go to displace. Then you go to about, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll use like four by four on this. And then you press OK and you just click on your displacement map and it would displace things. But in this case, you see, I probably don't even need it and it's kind of just making it more messy. So. I mean, it's always good to save displacement map, but sometimes you don't even need them to uh, be able to form the right material and the right uh, blend with your texture. But you see, I'm just gonna mask out <clears throat> from the hand uh, with my brush on my layer mask so that uh, obviously you don't want this overlapping the skin, right? So just use your brush on your layer mask, lower your opacity and mask this out. Alright, so the good thing about doing 
multiple jersey swaps so the only really good thing besides taking forever uh is that when you do something to one jersey you can kind of copy it to the next so with this hardened thing i'm just going to do the same steps that i told you guys to take when doing the kevin durant jersey um you guys see here i just added the waistband in and i also cha use channel mixer and color filled on linear light for the sleeves so i just painted on the layer mask there but yeah i'm gonna do the same steps for james harden i know we still have to add numbers and clean up a couple of things on kevin durant but i just want to get everything starting to come together so i can visualize it better in my mind but yes take the same steps for james harden as with kevin durant and uh once i do when i do this part i'm going to show you guys what i would do it's actually pretty simple to kind of mock the same uh pattern that these shorts are curling up in and you do want to make sure that you do something like that you don't want to just have a straight line because that will take away from the realism of the piece but i'll show you guys when i do that but for right now i'm going to copy the same steps as i did for making the jersey color the same as kevin durant's all right so what i was talking about for the jersey side um actually this side is kind of relatively similar to the see how the wrinkles are there that's actually pretty relatively similar so what i can just do here is just use my warp tool i'm right clicking right click go to warp and uh i'm just gonna warp it to this um it's, yeah like i said it's kind of relatively the same so i'm just gonna use my warp tool and warp it to this real quick so something like that and then at the bottom it does curve a little bit so you can also make points with your with the warp tool if you hold down alt and you click at a point you can warp it to a point so that's really uh, useful to use when doing basketball swaps and you can make points wherever you want but if you use too many then it starts getting a little confusing but yeah right there looks pretty good for the side stripe of the of the jersey and then you're gonna have to do another one you're gonna have to do like a bunch actually for this short all right so here is the jersey side and right now i'm gonna a clip of levels to it so this is harden jersey short side so right now i clip a levels to it and i'm just going to um try and brighten it up a little bit let's see yeah not too much because we don't want to lose detail but all right so something like that uh should be good then right here actually let me Use selective color too. You can use selective color. This can help out the color as well. I want to darken that a little bit. Just isn't too exactly my liking, but we can work with it and then fix stuff after. So what you're gonna have to do is pretty much cut this up into separate pieces. So what I'm gonna do is make this a smart object all together like this. And I'm gonna rasterize it because you're gonna have to make this into separate pieces all together. So this is gonna fit along the side but we have to cut into separate pieces so first i'm just gonna take this part at the top and literally just make off sections honestly because this is what we're just gonna have to do because this is curving a lot so cut off a section and we're just gonna start matching it to uh the shorts and um just notice where everything is turning and all things like that when you're doing a swap, especially when you have all these wrinkles, because this is going to really uh, add some realism to the swap and it's going to make it come out a lot better. So that's the first piece. Um, we might be able to work off just a couple pieces, honestly. So that's the first piece. This is the second. And you guys will see, I don't have to like be like, oh my gosh, this is, this is accurate here. This is not accurate here. Like you can just do pieces and put them together and it's not really the biggest deal like just just see you'll see i'm just gonna uh record this process just utilize your adjustment tools when you're doing this and you'll be fine i know that the bottom of the shorts aren't the the right bottom of the shorts yet but I'm going to keep it moving and the jersey number, but for right now, I'm going to keep it moving and get to the head swap. So for head swaps, it's actually going to be, well, I'm saying this now, but it's actually easier than you might think to do a head swap. Um, so what you have to do is just mask out the head first. So I'm going to go ahead and mask out the selection of the head and then um, 
we'll get on to what I'm gonna do from there. All right, so here's the head that I'm gonna use of Kevin Durant. And what you're gonna wanna do is just um, probably, I'd say convert it to a smart object. And then what you just wanna do is place everything to a relative point where it would probably be at. So you don't wanna get unrealistic or anything. Just place it where it would be at and do your best to just see where his head would probably be. You can move things around a little bit, but you can't warp things around too much or else it starts looking just weird. So you guys see I have like the head in there and what I'm gonna do is just add a layer mask and I'm going to soft brush this out. So I'm gonna drop my flow down. And I'm gonna soft brush this, trying to get uh, matched up with the head that was underneath, relatively close. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want to be pretty close. And then go on the top layer, or the, the other layer that was before, and mask that out too. And you can keep working to achieve this look. You just gotta keep playing going back and forth and eventually you'll get the head that you want to get on there the only thing that you have to keep in mind is you can't change the angle of the head that you're swapping like too much you can change a little bit but it can't be like too dramatic or it won't look uh, it won't look right like the angles that you pick for the head has to be pretty similar all right then once you get the head on there you're gonna go to selective color and Clip a selected color. I like to work on my reds when I'm using skin tone. So with my reds, I'm just gonna uh, try and blend it to exactly this color right here. And uh, yeah, if you're doing like like the same per player or the same person, it should be pretty easy with just reds to get to there. If you need a little bit of help, maybe go to your yellows or something like that. Because red and yellow are really like the skin tones. Just remember that for like future. Red and yellow are your skin tones really. And uh, also, if you want to use any other any other adjustments that might help you, so if you go to like the reds of this too, this could help you out as well. You never really know. It's kind of when you're doing head swaps, it's kind of trial and error. So you just got to see um, what looks best, where, and what's gonna help you out the most. But yeah, so this is already looking pretty good. I'm I'm pretty set on that. I think it looks nice nice and clean just this mask I want to clean up a little bit on the trims and the outside you know just something like that and we're gonna do the same thing for Harden another uh, quick tip is when you're doing this you can match up the eyes and the nose and this will give you a really accurate uh, estimation of where everything should be. And that can be achieved by just dropping down your opacity. All right, so the last thing that I'm gonna do before I do uh, the bottom of the shorts is the shoes. So now all you gotta do is really just find images that match the shoes and we're just gonna mask them out and put them into the scene and um, I'll show you how I would put them into the scene you also have to do the socks too but uh, yeah so we're gonna do the shoes and socks right now all right so now that I'm all done with the jersey swap I think it came out pretty nice you might want to clean up some things, but what I'm going to do instead of cleaning up directly on, I'm going to actually merge the two subjects together separately. Then I'm going to clean up everything uh, by itself. And I think that'll give me a better, a better uh, way of just making sure that everything's clean and I can just do it on one layer that's merged together. But when you merge them together, make sure you make a separate copy so that if you need to go back to the group, you can do so. So to make a group, all you got to do is from every layer that you have, click on the layer and then go down to the base subject and then you press control G and that makes a group. 
So I have my Harden group and I also have my KD group separated now. And that's gonna that's gonna help me out just to see the separation. And then from there, I'm gonna title. So I have them both titled. Duplicate the Harden layer. Duplicate the KD layer. Wait for it to load. And then I'm going to, um, let's see. That was a KD copy. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna merge it. So press Control E, merge that, and merge the other one. Now we can uh, work right on the literal person that we made. <laughs> And what I'm going to do here is just make sure everything's just like more clean. So like underneath here, I'm going to make sure this is connected. Um, probably add a little bit of light shadow just with like a soft brush on a black. Um, just adding shadows and things like that um, before I get on to trying to put it onto a scene. Because we have the scene from the original picture, but I want to put it onto a Brooklyn Net scene. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to show you guys how to manipulate a scene as well. All right, so they're pretty much clean and I like how they look. Now, what we're going to have to do is bring in, like I said, the uh, picture of a new scene. So technically we have this right here and this could work. I mean, in, in worst case scenario, you might have to use this. But what I'm going to try to do is bring in a new scene and I, I'm picking this scene right here. So I'm going to press Control C to copy it. Control C. I'm gonna go back to my project and put this scene um, behind it. And you're gonna to have to decide where your perspective is, right? So since this is like below KD, you kind of have to warp it a little bit to make the, the perspective a little bit sh more shallow. And then from there, you can resize things. So. I'm gonna resize it somewhere around here is where the perspective line would theoretically be but from what I'm seeing um, it's kind of it's kind of a I I guesstimate somewhat but after doing it for a while you kind of just know but it's gonna be somewhere around here because I can see the, his waistline is right around there as well but the biggest thing that's gonna help us is getting Kevin Durant out of this scene so First things first you can try is just filling in this part with like your lasso tool or something like that. So just shift that five content aware fill and yeah, it's not really uh, translating over. So that means we're probably gonna have to use other parts of a different picture to bring in the scene all together. But if you start content aware filling on like a soft brush, um, this can also um, definitely help. And this just gets it started for you. So on the court, on the court, I like to, uh, I like to just use the same texture, so I don't do content wear on the texture of the court, because you can do a little bit, but it starts looking weird. So I just press Control J after I make a selection, and then I'll go over it again, and then just change the perspective slightly just to get it to blend in with the court like that. Then on the harsh edges, I put a layer mask and soft brush, soft brush those things out. And then, like I said, you can do a little bit of content aware fill. Like here, I'd probably just brush that out real quick. Things like that um, are gonna help you start building up your scene. And over here, we can try the clone stamp tool where again, um, always on content aware fill when I use this when I'm doing scenes like this again. Just making your scene piece by piece. Just be careful and be uh, s be uh, smart in why you're doing it. Just do move with a purpose when you're doing um, content aware fill because it can get real sour real quick if you're not moving with a purpose and actually trying to visualize what you're making. And quickly enough, you will see that a scene is starting to come together without Kevin Durant on there. So you just gotta keep 
keep at it um, duplicate things over and over again like here I would take this part of the Motorola like this mask it out to this just taking relative pieces control J then I'd move it over now that covers his hand oh uh, yeah this is this is this is over the top but all you have to do really is just content aware fill this out now just like that just shift f5 content aware fill that out and then you're good and then also all right we're gonna you can either erase or use your layer mask tool again on a soft brush soft brush it out this is bringing that realism to the scene and we're also getting him out of there relatively quickly take the bottom part of the court now like over here Control J, move it over. And slowly but surely, making our scene. Eraser tool, soft brush, again. Nice. And then even on like parts of the court, you can do the same type of thing. Um, you just have to see like in your mind, you kind of will just know if you think about it where the end of the E will be, or you could use reference, but I can see clearly that the E is gonna end uh, right around there. Then I'm just gonna use some of the blue, bring that down just like that. And then I'm just gonna constantly where I feel the foot. So when you're doing this, just notice how I'm not really rushing it at all. I'm just taking my time and plotting everything. Um, just plotting. Pl I'm plotting. <laughs> I'm plotting. This make sure everything's just plotted real good, and you just are moving with purpose. Really, that's really all you gotta do when you're trying to do a, a scene manipulation. And then to fill in like some parts of this, all you have to do is use. Uh, pieces from different photos and you'll be able to just merge them into the scene uh, when you use different photos so this is also a valuable part to scene manipulation at this point we're almost done all I gotta really do is uh, finish up getting everything that's it's still just straggling on the core off but after that then I'm just gonna work on the shadows and if you guys don't know how to work on shadows um, you should definitely know that if you are tuning into this but if not I can drop a shadows video soon as well but yeah that's all we have to do after I just work on just finishing the court is the shadow work and then we'll be done Once you guys hit the point where you're like, all right, this is cool, I'm done, I'm done, um, do not forget to use camera raw filter because this could bring out some highlights that you might want to have on there. So just go to filter, camera raw filter, and from here, we're just gonna set the temp, probably, you know, somewhere a little cool, but I don't want it to be too cool. And then contrast, I, I only mess around with a couple things in here, but. I mean, filter raw is all experimenting. I I would say there's nothing that I do specifically on each piece. I just experiment and go about things how I want to go about them and just see what looks good to my eyes and what doesn't. But it can definitely help to bring out some nice points. So I really like to use the color grading. I use this on about all my pieces color grading and if you utilize curves you can get a bunch of like metallic -y type of vibes getting going which can also be fun and just add your own little 
uh, impact to your photos, style, whatever you want to call it. I don't care what you call it. So I'm just working through on, on like most of them and getting to a point where I like it. So I'm just going to press OK and then that's, that's the before, that's after. So I like to drop the opacity down a little bit and mix in best of both worlds. And then um, I press Control Alt Shift E to make a new copy from visible, and then I'll duplicate the layer. I put this layer on screen, okay, and then I blur this one out to about 30, like that. Then I'll drop my screen down a little bit, and this kind of gives it that dreamy look, which uh, kind of fits right in with how this happened, like. What the heck this happened actually dreamy look you know what i'm saying pretty cool only other thing is probably just a little bit more shade on the bottom of kevin Durant's foot like over here and i would just brush it out softly like that something around that around along those lines around that around those lines whatever you want to call it All right and look at it super saucy we love it so with that being said that's going to do it for the video i hope you guys enjoyed and you learned a lot throughout this whole process like this is the first time i'm really showing like my whole process to a jersey swap head swap and even the whole arena swap but honestly so uh, make sure you guys drop a like down below comment what other tutorials and videos you want to see from me and until next time guys stay scoped peace